What's up, everybody? We back with another message, another video. Thank you to all my new subscribers and future new subscribers. You know we do nothing here without God because everything is spiritually led by God over here. We cover the world from a spiritual and physical aspect to get the raw, real, and uncut answers. So anything you hear, anything you see in these end times, may you test the spirits, a.k.a. take the words and visuals back to prayer with God, as there are many Decepticons running around in these end times sent from the enemy, had a strong, close, and personal relationship with God. Good, great, and awesome. All right, everybody, September 25th, 2024, on a good old Wednesday word here from the Lord. Specifically, God's stern words for false doctrine. And the Lord had a lot to say regarding false doctrine, reincarnation, and third eye. So he gave his own words about it. And we're going to use scripture to look back on what he was talking about. And I'm going to start off by reading the community post done beforehand and add to the discussion if need be or scripture, okay? To make things easy to follow. So let's go ahead and read this. Over the past few months, especially, many people have really been challenging the word of God in a dangerous way. I understand that people have questions, but that is because people do not understand what they're reading. They don't understand the word of God, right? That is why we pray and also build that relationship with the author, God, the word of God. Way too many times have I been told that absence of a topic in the word doesn't mean that it is false. If something goes against scripture, then it is a false teaching. As someone who knew three scriptures at the start, I'm talking about myself here. God has taught me much piece by piece. Never once has he told me to go outside of his word. The enemy can take advantage of your curiosity if you start going too far with that stuff. So many in deception reference the word when they want to on these platforms. Then they decide to go off on that tangent of deception. So we got to be careful. Many are not hearing God speak to them in these days. The word tells us. Deception is going to be running high in many different verses. And we're going to read a couple when it comes to rejection of the word of God, the truth. God would never tell you to go outside of his living word or make you question it either. All 66 books are what God allowed for you to read on this earth today. He is in control of all things and do not forget it. So if you agree with that, then you know God is not going to sit here and let all his children read something that is going to deceive you. Y'all understand? He's in control. Ain't nobody going to be able to mask the truth. He is in control. Do not forget it. No one has the power to hide the word of God as it is living. It lives in us when we have God. Demons are not going to become irritated by something man-made like that. All right? There is no other book or doctrine that will connect with what God is trying to say to you like his living word or make a demon manifest like his living word. Okay, that's why Satan today is doing what he can to twist that very word. We have to be careful and I'm going to go to scripture before going to the Lord's words here to back this piece up. Second Timothy 4, 3 to 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. This is literally happening today. Another one, 1 Timothy 6, 3 to 5, error and greed. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reveling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such withdraw yourself. 
All right. So let's continue to the Lord's words. Many have written in the past. It is about who has guided them. Anything outside of life is death. So the word of God is a living word. That whole point of the word of God is to lead you to eternal life. It's to help us move the right way. Okay. If my word is living, what does that make of anything that does not come from it? Dead. Hence is why in Revelation 3, the dead church is mentioned as the dead church because they teach witchcraft, divination, all that crazy stuff. It's nothing but death spiritually. Even through the death of the Messiah, did life come from it? He died for our sins. Even after death to the wicked, does life become restored in the end? Even through death to many in the great tribulation, does a multitude live? Revelation 7. They might die physically, but they live for eternity, for choosing God. Right? Accepting the truth and not worshiping Satan. When a wicked man falls, many shall live. So people that are deceiving, when God removes those people out of the way, that brings a chance for more people to live eternally. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. That's Proverbs. The point of your father's words is life. My correction leads to eternal life. So why do you entertain the words of death? In other words, why do you read, speak outside the word of God? For you seek deep knowledge and wisdom when many have yet to receive the basics. So that means take your time. It's a process. Then he gets into the third eye and so forth, reincarnation. The third eye your sorcerers speak of, it is a gateway. Once you are in agreement with the enemy, you have opened up a gateway. It is all about your willingness. And we're going to read something real quick in scripture. 2 Corinthians 2.11 Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay? What you got to understand is Satan's devices include his words, imagery, his lies, imagery, movies and music, words and imagery of deception, word curses, right? It's about the words that Satan speaks to deceive people. You know, the third eye is connected to Hinduism. So y'all got to really understand that that's got to do with religious spirits and those are not of God. It's all deception based of other gods and so forth. But the third eye is an image. And Satan uses his words to lie about it. The third eye is nothing but a tool to get people who seek and desire Wisdom after knowledge after wisdom after knowledge instead of waiting on God to give to them certain things. And he takes advantage of their curiosity and leads them astray. Hence, the third eye being a device that Satan will use to open up a gateway and get you to come into agreement with illegally moving in the spirit. Okay, I hope that's making sense. It's a concept to lead you astray and get you to come into agreement with witchcraft, rebellion. Continuing forward, your witches and warlocks and their teachings of death. Then he jumps into reincarnation. Reincarnation, as you speak of, it is nothing but false comfort, a blindness from the reality of your father. I am that I am. Who I am is one that shall not lie. I have spoken purpose over many before the womb. All right, now he told me to take y'all to this one. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. 
uh, ordained you a prophet to the nation. So he's giving us that imagery. But before birth, hey, before the womb, how you think you got in the womb? How you, you know, how he sent you, <laughs> you know, with a purpose. So he says, I suppose each life did not serve its purpose to my plan in some way. Oh, the foolish ways of men. I suppose Judas Iscariot, who betrayed the Messiah, was not known beforehand. I have surely made a mistake and must give another life through him for willful sin. So he's like, basically, he's basically making this point against reincarnation. He didn't actually mess up. But what he's saying is, even when a person doesn't do right, and let's say he he or she, that person, goes after someone who does serve him or attacks a person who does serve him, that can still be used as a test to strengthen the person who's in agreement with the Father in heaven, right? In some way, God is going to use something as a purpose or as a part of his plan for somebody, for something, anything. Just like a wicked king is put in place to bring people to the Father, to make conditions bad for them so that they have no choice but to come to him. Everybody falls into a plan of God. And he does not make mistakes, even if we do have free will. Continuing forward, there are many of you who do not understand what you are entertaining for many forget the meeting of the Son of Man, Moses, and Elijah. I am the way. I am the truth. For those who seek me shall know the truth. For many seek wisdom, knowledge, power, and authority, not of your Father. So he just bringing up that transfiguration scene with Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Like for some reason, I guess people think they're going to have multiple lives. We're going to read scripture here. It don't make sense. Revelation 20, 14 to 15. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Judgment day. If you in a book of life, you have eternal life. If you ain't, as the scripture tells you, you away from the father for eternity, the second death spiritually. It ain't hard to, you know, understand when it's given to you properly. But a lot of people do not want sound doctrine. And they, for some reason, love what they love and want to believe what they want to believe. It's dangerous. And we've got to continue to look at sound doctrine. Because we live in times today where Satan is on a rampage. These lying spirits are running rampant in people and around people. Okay? You got to watch everything you entertain, including people. I don't care what church you go to. I don't care who you think you're fellowshipping with. Your number one relationship is with God. If you look around you and you listen closely and pray and actually take all things back to God, you're going to see how bad it is. It's just too important. Look around you and where we at. Peace and blessings and I will catch y'all in the next one.